So this is our first of two series of slides as a review for our final exam. All right, so put on your fancy walking shoes. Let's go, uh, I'm not sure what this woman's doing. All right, here we go. So uh, our final exam is 90 points. Uh, so we're gonna start off with eight short diagrams. Nothing um, more than probably like one major concept within the diagram, but they're pretty much shorter sentences. Um, and then we're gonna have 30 multiple choice questions, much like we would have on our practice quiz and our real quizzes. We're going to do 15 matching, which I find to be the most challenging part of the final exam. Then there's going to be nine points that come from verbs. We'll talk about verb strings, how to build a verb and how to deconstruct a verb, active in the passive voice and switching those around, as well as understanding what E prime is and changing a sentence into E prime. There'll be a quick sentence about absolute phrases, which was just disastrous on quiz number six. So we're coming back to how to write an absolute phrase. And lastly, there'll be two, point, two points on a question about something with the very early things we talked about of the grammar gut, your grammar brain, and your grammar heart. We'll review all of those things, so you'll feel very confident going into it. So let's talk about uh, the matching part. Once again, I think it's the most challenging part. So let's kind of walk through that. So to prepare for the matching portion of the final exam, I'm going to ask you to identify an underlying portion of a sentence. So let's just simply see what you remember, and then I'll show you the word bank of things you probably want to make sure you have down somewhere on your yellow notes. So let's see what we can do together. So all semester long, Mr. Marsh was impersonal, cold, mean. Notice how there are no ands in between those words in the listing, and so therefore we call this an acidentin. All semester long, Mr. Marsh was impersonal and cold and mean. And it's slightly different with the ands in between each one, but not with commas, but just with ands in between each item. We call that the poly sedent. Remember, poly means many, so there's many ands as opposed to an a sedent, in which a means not, and so there weren't ands. My hack US teacher, Mr. Shockey, replaced our exam with a movie trivia test. All right, Mr. Shockey's renaming teacher, that makes him an a positive, a positive. I said, I wondered why Mr. Fisher looked like a homeless man today. When you think about it, I wondered, it's looking for its direct object, I wondered what. And this whole grouping of words, they're all serving as a direct object. So that makes it nominal. But within it, it's actually a little sentence. There's Mr. Fisher, and there's also a verb, looked. So therefore, it's a clause. We call this a nominal or a noun clause. Mr. Doherty, who gave up meat for Lent, kept lathering his arm in gravy and licking it during class. What well, starts off the word who, it's describing Mr. Doherty, so it's a description, so therefore it's describing a noun, it's working as an adjective, but it's also a clause, it's a sentence, because it has a subject who and has a verb, so we call this the adjective clause, and it's just referred to as the relative clause. If I look at this back part, which says Mr. Doherty kept lathering his arm in gravy and licking it during class, probably one of the hardest questions of the quiz or the exam, here's this ing, but I didn't say Mr. Doherty was lathering. That would be a verb. This is why I said he kept lathering. So kept is the verb, and then lathering and licking must be direct objects. Those are noun jobs. And therefore, an ing, which is doing a noun job, as we know, is called a gerund. So those are both gerund phrases. Smelling smoke from the back of the room, Hagen looked concerned when, when Matthew began prematurely burning his grammar notes in the middle of the final. Once again, it starts with an ing, but it's at the very beginning of the sentence, and it's actually describing Hagen, so it's working as an adjective. So an ing working as an adjective, we know, is called a participle. So this makes this the participial phrase. ing, kind of describing that noun. If I take this back half where it says, Hagen looked concerned when, here's a when, which is an adverb question, but it's also a full sentence, meaning it's a clause. So it's an adverb as a clause when Matthew began prematurely burning his grammar notes in the middle of the final. Remember, an adverb clause can oftentimes be flipped around, and I could. I could flip this guy around and say, when Matthew began bur prematurely burning his grammar notes in the middle of the final, Hagen looked concerned. So I can kind of flip it around a little bit. That's what an adverb does. But this is an adverb or an adverbial clause. Mr. Achille was certainly in a foul mood today. And one of the early things we did in diagramming is we talked about idioms. In this case, he's not really in a location called foul mood, but he is grouchy, and so therefore in a foul mood is an idiom or an idiomatic expression. After her rough AP chem exam, Rowan quickly ran home to scrounge together some money as a bribe. I'm dying for a comma after the word exam. I'm not sure why I don't have one in there. Um, but she ran 
home. She didn't run what, she ran where. So it's a noun, home, but it's kind of doing an adverb's job. I kept coming back to this one over and over again during Grammar Olympics. This is the adverbial objective. It's a noun serving as an adverb. Look at this to scrounge. We know that's an infinitive. It's two plus a verb, but what kind of infinitive is it? Remember, we have noun or nominal infinitives, we have adverb or adverbial infinitives, and we have adjective or adjectival infinitives. So remember, the trick is, if I could change it to in order to, that makes it an adverb. Rowan quickly ran home in order to scrounge together. That makes that the adverbial infinitive. Our brains melting into jelly. We no longer cared for any of this grammar nonsense. Well, that's not a sentence. It didn't say our brains were melting into jelly jelly. It just simply says our brains melting in the jelly. And then the rest of the sentence picks up. That's that weirdo that we have to be really good at. This is the absolute phrase, a noun which has some kind of modifier after it. Our brains melting into jelly. Jimmy said that Olivia wouldn't finish the exam as fast as he, really we're saying as fast as he would finish the exam. Ah, but those words are missing and we call missing words elliptical, and that makes this the elliptical clause. Here's this word that. Jimmy said that Olivia wouldn't finish the exam as fast as he. So the word that may not stand out to you as something that's really allowed that gripping. Um, we could call it a relative pronoun, and it is, but I want to look at something different about it. Notice how the word that could be imaginary. You could cut it out and say, Jimmy said Olivia wouldn't finish the exam as fast as he. And if you can cut something out, remember what we call that? We call that an expletive. Be on the lookout for the word that, or to be, or as. To be is tricky because it looks like it's an infinitive, and it can be, but sometimes the to be, like in a pattern nine or 10, is also an expletive. So be careful of the expletives. Midway into the exam, Loriana wanted to punch Mr. Marsh in the neck. Well, here's that infinitive, to punch, but I didn't say Loriana wanted in order to punch. It's not an adverb, it's working as a noun. Loriana wanted to punch 